I've been waiting for you here for quite a while. Knight of Beauty. You're the one who stole Guyon, right? Hand it over. You have no idea how dangerous that cursed sword is. Dangerous? In my humble opinion, the real danger is always the hand wielding the weapon. Yes, I did. As a Drilla's knight, I've sworn to live in poverty, and I abhor theft. I had to leave behind a rose petal in order to keep my promise to Master Guyon and uphold my knightly oath. What? What do you mean? I agreed to assist Master Guyon in its escape from the Sienjo. As the person who pulled it from the stone monument, captivated by its beauty, I must not let it down. I couldn't stay in the arsenal to convince the craftsmen, nor did I want to take the sword like a thief. That's why I left behind a small piece of evidence that pointed to my identity in the hope of an open and honest conversation with you. Whatever your reasons are, you're planning to take the cursed sword away from the Sienjo. Hand it over to me! Back then, it was the beauty of Master Guyun that impressed me. So I willingly embarked on the journey to return the sword. But unfortunately, Master Guyon's homeland is no longer the ideal place for it to return to. As a knight of beauty, I must not abandon it halfway. Oh no. He's completely captivated by the power of that cursed sword. That's what makes cursed swords so scary. Captivated? No, I am touched by Master Guyon's flawless beauty. To be honest, I'm confused why none of you can understand this sword. This is quite heartrending. I've already made up my mind to take Master Guyon away from this Yenjo. That cursed sword has messed with your ability to think. But I'll break you free from its grip. I'll shatter its illusion. And the sword itself. Fair lady, if you're intent on taking away this person, this sword that is under my protection. Please engage me with a fair duel according to knightly etiquette. As a representative of this duel, I, Argenti, challenge you. I swear on the spirit of chivalry, in front of Adrilla the Beauty, that I will represent Master Guyon in this duel. If I win, you will allow Master Guyon to leave the Sienjo with me. And if you best me, Miss Yun Lei, I'll accept my defeat and turn Master Guyon over to you. Do you accept my challenge, Miss Yun Lei? Fine. Let's see whose desire is stronger. Your desire to take it away, or my desire to hunt down all cursed swords. Show me what you've got. You're not going to use Guyan to fight for victory? Well, I know a thing or two about swordplay. In a proper duel like this, a knight should rely on the skills he's honed day and night. Good time to save your own real weirdo. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Destiny for oblivion. The flesh wound. Let thine wound. Put forth all your might. Say bye to breathing. <laughs> Step. Relax. Dest. Ill tidings. Nice, <laughs> like my friends. <laughs> Indulge yourselves. <laughs> Confess. <laughs> The waters of oblivion. Rise to the challenge. Bear witness. To let the duel commence. Time to mix things up. Destiny's hand has. Uh. Stand still. <laughs> Memories up beneath the waters lies an endless abyss. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. 
Kill them all. Another destined for oblivion. Step up, let's see ya. How's this taste? Destiny's hand Price, has like truly friend. blessed me. <laughs> Indulge yourself! Relax. Time to say bye. Boom. Ill fate to say. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. I've lost. According to the rules of a knight's duel, I should keep my promise and hand over the sword to you. But before I do that, I hope that you, as the winner, might have the mercy and... Listen to Master Guyan's past experiences. This sword has been cursed since the day it was forged. Place it in front of me, and let me destroy it. Do what she says, Knight. <laughs> but... You've done so much for me already. It's time for me to face her alone. I'm weary of fighting. I just want to share my past with you. To explain why I wanted to escape. After that, I'll leave my destiny in your hands. Are you afraid to witness my past, little girl? Afraid? <laughs> well, you do have a different aura from other cursed swords. But you're just trying to use my curiosity to lure me in. Well, you know best that a single touch won't snatch away anyone's sanity. <clears throat> Fine. Show me your past. Already. Impossible to contact the main Cloud Knight forces. What awaits me will be a long and lonely war. Follow me. Is this your memory? here. I didn't feel it when I was in the thick of battle, but now it's freezing me to the bone. <sighs> You're indeed a masterpiece from the Xianzhou Juming. If you hadn't taken control of my body, I probably would have been decapitated in that fight. Quiet, and stay alert. Boris and wolf troopers never give up the hunt. <laughs> Hey, just relax a bit. It's been over 300 days since we were both stranded on this planet. The transmitter never rings, so I guess we can't count on that anymore. The people on this planet still use beasts to pull their carts. Obviously, there's no way they can help us fix the star skiff. <sighs> Looks like we're stranded on this forsaken planet for the rest of our lives. Oh, the rest of a Xianzhou native's life could be terribly long. Are you feeling any desperation? All by yourself in this hostile world? Yeah, a bit. Perhaps. When things get too rough for you to handle, just leave everything to me. No need to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. Yeah, sure. If I really can't handle things anymore, I'll leave my body to you. But now is not that time. Do you really think you can oppose an entire Boris and army with your limited skills? What are you holding out for? 
It's true that I'm stranded here, but it seems like that Borison pack is in the same boat. By the way, Guyan, do you know what a seed is? A seed may seem insignificant, but with careful cultivation and time, it can grow into a huge, unwavering tree. You said that the rest of a Sienjo native's life could be terribly long. You're right. That's why I intend to plant a seed named Resistance here, and nurture it for the rest of my life. I want to show the people of this land how to defend themselves against those monsters. I can already see the seed in the eyes of those people. <laughs> you really think you can do it? Why not just give me control, and we can revel in the bloodbath together? What was the memory I just saw? It was a memory of me and a Cloud Knight. Stranded on an unfamiliar planet. We crash-landed on a planet occupied by Borison. Just the two of us. I can feel that it was a lonely war. I'm alive, but all the young people in the village... They died. They died for you. They died because of your big promises. Promising them a life free from the Borison. I tasted their despair before death. They didn't see it coming, and neither will you. We can't stay here. Let's move on to the next village. Why? What's the point? You and your sorry excuse for an army have been fighting for over three decades, and you haven't won a single battle. What you're sowing is not resistance, but despair. This world is hopeless. It's completely infested with packs of Borison. You've seen and you know their methods. And those commoners you've put your hopes in. They just kneel down and worship the monsters devouring their children and families, calling them their Beastmasters. You beheaded one of the Beastmasters for their sake, but they turned on you because they were scared of the boars and taking revenge. You remember all that, right? I... I do. I remember my first death. The Borison <laughs> cut off my head. But I also remember that if it weren't for a brave youngster who risked his neck to reattach my head and give me a proper burial, I would have disappeared completely. I remember everything the people did for me. They left food at the entrance of my cave, fixed my fur coat, and some even joined my resistance. The rest of the Sienjo native's life is still terribly long, and there will be new youngsters who will stand beside me in battle. Time is on our side. <sighs> you said it was a lonely war. No. It wasn't a war filled with loneliness, but with despair. So much despair that I don't want to ever taste it again. <laughs> I'm leaving. Where are you going, Your Highness? I'm returning to my homeland, a distant place beyond the sky. I'm not coming back. But what should we do with you gone? What, what if those wolf demons show up again? They won't, my child. You've wiped out the last of them. 
But before I go, I need you to do one thing for me. Even though the wolf demons are gone, new monsters will appear in this world. Soon, a demon will appear, donning golden branches and knowing only bloodshed. However, fear not, my children. I'm entrusting you with this sword that's been with me in countless battles. Use the skills I've taught you over the years, and you'll surely defeat that last demon. But that's not all. I need you to construct a stone monument for me. It must be large and sturdy enough to seal the remains of that demon forever. This is a debt you owe me, and you must fulfill it. Do you understand? You lied to them. And you lied to me, too. Oh? You promised that you'd give your body to me when you couldn't handle things anymore. Well, this Sienjo native's life has finally come to an end, my old friend. How about one last chance for revenge? Come and bid me farewell for the final time. He had long since come to some understanding. I could sense a mix of intricate emotions flowing out. It wasn't bloodlust, or anger, or fear. What he had left for you was hope. They've learned how to fight monsters. But there's still one last monster lingering in the world. Kill it, my old friend. He left me there without ever looking back. Thank you, my old friend. Heliobi can taste human emotions. How do my emotions taste? My old friend. <laughs> a hint of bitter compassion and a touch of scalding courage. Your heart's deepest desire is to end war once and for all. Now, the war is finally over. Can you hear? <laughs> Even though you can't hear me anymore, my old friend, I'll do everything I can to bring an end to all conflicts in this world. So, this is the past of the Call of Allen people's Sword of Heroes? You helped the people of that world bring an end to war? No, I did not. I am a weapon, and I only became the cause of more conflicts. Countless monarchs of Kalevala saw me as a symbol of kingship endowed by nature and they waged wars in order to possess me. I grew tired of their wicked intentions. I didn't want to kill for anyone anymore. So I returned to the stone monument where my master was buried. And since then, no one was able to remove me from it. But you allowed Argenti to take you away? Because even after all this time, I still wanted my master to come home. During the sword gifting ceremony, 
I felt anguish when I learned that I would be handed over to the most skilled swordmaster and once again become a tool for killing. My master had engraved his deepest desire into my blade. End war. As a weapon, my purpose was predetermined from the start. I had to become a deadly sword that would relentlessly hack and kill. But once I fulfilled my mission, would I have the right to choose my own destiny like he did? So, I asked the Knight of Beauty to help me break free from this never-ending cycle of bloodshed. These thousands of years have naturally turned into memories of mine. I think I understand the beauty the knight was talking about now. I don't want to be a sword that brings death. My war ended long ago. The years spent as a tombstone were my finest. I've told you everything about my experience with Master Guhian on Kalavala. And now, I'm sure that Miss Yun Li is as moved by the sword's flawless beauty as I was back then. Even though I had heard the legends of this sword from the delegation, delving into its memories was still fascinating. Yun Li, I trust Gu Yin's experiences have changed your mind. It wasn't until I held Guyan in my hands that I could sense its thoughts and unspoken words. I always thought a cursed sword infused with a heliobus would only bring rage and slaughter. I never thought someone could leave behind the desire to end war and even change the nature of the Cursed Sword. My position was too extreme. Guyan is truly a sword of heroes. I... I apologize to all of you for my behavior. I'm sorry. Now that we've proven Miss Yun Li's innocence and found the sword, should we now return it to the arsenal? No. I'm still going to melt down this sword. your true desires, Guyan. I can sense that you're tired of being a sword. Constantly serving new masters and fighting battles you no longer want to be part of. Right? But being a sword is my destiny. I'm doomed to serve some master and fight battles endlessly. Can the wind choose to stop blowing? Can a cloud choose to stop drifting? No. It's the same for me. A creation with a predetermined destiny. That's not true, Guyan. That nameless swordmaster shaped his own destiny. So you can too. I just can't picture my destiny being anything other than that of a sword. Do you remember when you stood alone in front of the Swordmaster's stone monument? People admired you because you carried the memories of the hero. You were no longer a sword. You were a memorial. Later, as I became worn and weathered, the gentle wind would pass through the hollows of my body, creating melodic tones that echoed in the distant mountains. 
I became a musical instrument then. I miss those times. Can a creation become what it wants to be? The answer is yes. I'll grant your wish, Guyan, and transform you into something different. Something different? But this is the prize for the war dance. If the Kalevalan delegation finds out, it, it, please say something, General Huayen. Well, my granddaughter has always been stubborn. Are you really sure about this, Yunli? What do you all think? Fulfilling Master Guyan's wishes is the reason I came to the Sienjo. With Adrilla's blessing, you could turn Master Guyan into a plow. But as long as it fulfills his wish to end war, I support it fully. Then, I'll leave it to you, Yunli. It's been an honor getting to know you like this. The honor is mine. Thank you, Yunli. <sighs> Why the long face, my child? Are you feeling regret, perhaps? You were completely determined when melting down the sword. So, why the sudden change of heart? Grandpa, I melted down the prize for the war dance. How are you going to explain this to the lawful? Oh, am I hearing right? This little girl is worried about her grandpa. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. <laughs> if only I talked to you from the beginning, Grandpa. Maybe things wouldn't have escalated like this. But at least Guyan got what it wanted. I have no regrets there. <sighs> when it comes to swords, you... You and your father are cut from the same cloth. So... Are you planning to continue melting down the rest of Hong Wong's swords? Yeah. Guyan is unique. But the other cursed swords are still too dangerous for anyone to handle. But maybe I'll try to be more patient next time. Be more patient. Well said. Remember what you learned today because there will be many more situations in the future that will require you to be more patient. Understood. But what about the prize? Well, ever since you showed up at the ceremony, I had a hunch. So I prepared another sword as a backup plan. And don't worry, this one has nothing to do with Heliobi. <laughs> That's perfect. By the way, the ambassador from Kalevala and that knight went to Aram Alley. They're looking for a spot to honor the hero. Why don't we go take a look together? Oh, General Huayan. What brings you here? Well, my granddaughter was inspired by the heroic legends told by the Mieka Kivesa. So she dragged me here to take a look. I come from a long line of Kalevalan monument keepers. For generations, my family has guarded the stone monument left behind by the, the nameless hero. Over the centuries, a golden tree sprouted from under the monument, and its branches have never withered. We Kalevalans see it as proof of the hero's existence. Before leaving Kalevala, I took a branch from that golden tree, hoping to plant it here to represent the hero returning to his homeland. That sounds good. We Sienjo people don't make coffins or set up memorials, so I'm sure he would be happy to rest here where life is bustling. The hero had asked our ancestors to carve something into the monument, so I made a copy of it too. While the inscription is 
pretty worn with age. Perhaps you can still make out some of it. I have drifted far from my homeland and am on the brink of death. Yet, I take solace in having honorably fulfilled my duties. Should you feel compassion for me, kind traveler, please take a handful of soil hence and bring it back to the lawful. <laughs> Mr. Pavo, I wonder if that hero ever left a name in your history. I apologize, but the hero's epic battles happened long ago, and he did not leave any name for us to call him. But in our mythology, he came from the heavens, and so we call him the Cloud Knight. Welcome home, Cloud Knight. Now, you can also rest here, Uyen. <laughs>